Welcome. This is Zangler, the Tesla Semi Advocate, bringing you another episode of the Giga Semi Factory Construction Drone Coverage. And this video was filmed on May 17th in the a Saturday afternoon, early evening, some very pretty lighting. I was lucky to actually fly, but my flight was cut short a little bit by high winds. I would say I was blown 15 to 20 with gusts up to 25. And there had been uh, storm cells coming through up northern Nevada and um, wasn't sure I was gonna be able to fly, but it sort of cleared up and a window, a little weather window opened and here we are coming in, zooming in on the um, north, northern wall of the uh, Giga Semi factory. And one of the most recent updates is all of the door seals or um, that have been put up on these uh, loading doors. Uh, I actually saw the last video, when actually when I was had an, uh, a video I couldn't take, I uh, filmed from, from, the, from the ground and shared that. And it, there was actually a semi trailer, tractor and trailer backed up to one of these loading doors. There's a lot going on inside, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's um, pretty clear to me, based on the materials on the outside, we can uh, make a pretty, educa pretty educated, uh, reasonable educated guess on what's going on on the inside, at least the, the major focus. Anyway, let's uh, circumnavigate the um, factory and then we'll talk about the details and zoom in on certain areas as certain points of interest. We are coming up on the uh, northwest end and uh, based on the cra crazy high winds, um, the flag is gonna be replaced pretty soon and they do it, they do it regularly. You probably haven't had a chance to get to it. In any event, we're coming around the north west to corner of the building come we're going to go down the west western um, edge of the building and then we can see there uh, a major hvac project and this will be where we'll uh, it looks like they're going to build something similar to what's in um, giga texas and if you follow joe tegmeyer you'll know that um, this is sort of a abbreviated smaller version of that um, HVAC facility and I just thought we'd take a nice look around at the amazing northern Nevada scenery. This project has caught a few people's attention. This is one of the many fulfillment centers. It's like a twin and it's actually called Milan Twins and the, the, the vacant land on the right, if you see that little black dot or gray dot, that is my midnight silver metallic Model S plaid and that's me flying the drone but I'm gonna to have to find a new drone takeoff location uh, as they start building up there but even as impressive as the speed with which they're building that building it's much smaller and isn't um, built for a purpose it is a generic uh, warehouse fulfillment center building that um, is all up and down Electric Avenue. Amazing amount of development going on at um, Tahoe Reno Industrial Complex off of USA Parkway. So here's a hint at what's going on inside. Um, in previous videos, we've seen a lot of these huge wiring looms um, on the other side of the building. Now they've placed them here, and uh, that tells us that and we have other information, basically just the other equipment that's been brought in, channels that are built for um, putting wiring in. The, the major focus right now is supplying power to, to the assembly line in a very um, specific manner as needed by the plans. This is the southwest corner of the stamping, Section G stamping building. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. A lot of little progress um, that you really have to pay attention to. 
this little appendage building sticks out and you'll notice that the sky braces, the braces that are um, uh, a technique provided by um, BZI industries um, and they are, instead of having guy wires in all directions, they're a technique for anchoring a building during construction. And as you can see, there's all different, there's several sizes of these sky bridges and these are the largest we've seen for the, for the tallest part of the building. Um, be interesting to see when these start coming off. I would say that the entire building, the, met, the steel is all in place for, for structural integrity. So I would expect to see them come off soon and in a way I'm surprised they haven't been removed but it may be to allow the um, footings extra time, the concrete footings extra time to cure. This may be in fact them getting ready to do just that or just building up, building out the, that, the uh, beams, the perimeter beams that the uh, wall panels will attach to. On this project, they're using, unlike the Giga Texas where they used concrete walls, these are narrow strip, narrow strips of insulated metal wall panels. And um, if you look close, you can see the little lines. There you go, you can much better now. You can see how narrow those, those uh, wall panels are. And they're able to put them up with telehandlers as opposed to cranes. Once again, saving capital expenditures. We just saw the panel table. It is not long for this project because the roof is nearly complete. On section G, the uh, tallest stamping section, and um, the panel table, which has been a key component of this uh, construction project, will, uh, will soon go away. We're now coming around the southeast corner of the building and there are more loading bays here. And if, if we really give it a lot of thought, we could probably come up with a um, flow of the factory assembly. We know, that the, we know where the stamping is. We know there's loading doors, loading bays over there. And that is probably to provide raw um, metal to the stamping process. Then we have a a decent handful of loading bay doors on this side of the building, the, the eastern side. Here's the BFE, and we're also going over the um, megacharger uh, installation. And it'll be interesting to see what, I believe they're gonna be four cabinets providing power um, to 16 megachargers. And then here, back, getting back to that other thought in trying to ascertain how the buildings, how things are gonna flow on the inside on the factory assembly line, this northern ed edge of the building that we, that we first came, viewed at the beginning of this video, it has the, the most loading bay doors. So mo the, this is where the mo most raw material and um, supplier parts are gonna come in. Another thing to notice is that we have been watching them putting these uh, piers for these lights. And um, if you go back and look at the video and, and as we continue, you can see that they, in a week since our last flight, they've put up a lot of these light posts. And um, I believe on the left side of those lights is where the factory business is gonna take place. And the right side, if the rendering is true to form, is going to be the Tesla Semi racetrack. Oh, did I say racetrack? I meant test track. Anyways, they, there is a track, but uh, I don't actually see a whole lot of room for it as we, for it to, cir to circle the building as we get over here to the, um, to the west side of the building that we're going to see pretty soon. But in any event, look at all those uh, drainage, all the drainage that has been um, put in place off of the roofs. The roof, and I say roofs because each bit, each section, A, B, C, D, E, F, and now G is really its own standalone building. Here's all those components and, and pipes that we've seen 
um, in Texas, which is a little different. I think the rendering for this section doesn't show this HVAC. It shows um, more a bunch of tanks. But here you can see that we're, we have a new construction project to follow, and that's this build out as they build two levels and put in the, that piping up above. More of the materials, those evaporative coolers. I'm not sure why there's ones on their side. I could have sworn those, I, I thought those were poured. Apparently they're, um, they're poured separately. They're not poured right into the ground so they can actually move them around. Underneath that, those evaporative coolers are those round ones, and then these are the largest set of, I believe we readers, viewers have said there are train evaporative coolers, and you can see they're going to build a structure over them. And this is where we'll spend most of our time, well, not most of our time, but some of our time also Looking forward to Bridge Crane Day. I think it's probably a little bit off, but um, can't wait to see the bright red Tesla logoed bridge cranes come in. I don't, I, as, as we've discussed before, I don't believe there'll be any Giga Presses involved in this project. Here's a nice view of the um, Northwest. The western edge, the stamping section G with the roof nearly complete, the, sh the sheet metal, corrugated metal portion of the roof is nearly complete. You can see there's a little bit of work for the panel table to do, but based on past progress, that, that could be done, that roof could be complete in terms of the corrugated sheet metal with it by, the, by the next time we fly. And then they'll start, then they'll bring in the insulation and the waterproof membrane to complete the roof. At the end of today's video is something a little different. We can see the video land and you can see the Tesla Semi Advocate has been flying with an injury to his right hand. Anything, taking, taking one for the team for those of you that are very that are interested in the um, following the progress of the Tesla Semi high volume factory, thank you as always for joining and viewing. I appreciate all of all of my viewers, and I hope you find this uh, content interesting. Until next time, enjoy the. Uh, the landing, the return to home feature of the DJI drone, which I have got to give a shout out to. It flies in amazing conditions, stable, 20, 25 mile an hour gusts, and um, no ill effects. Amazing technology. Thanks.